The first reading this morning, A Prayer for Healing and Moral Renewal, is from Psalm 51, the first 12 verses. It can be found on page 520 in the Old Testament section of the Pew Bible. Listen for the word of God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence and blameless blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. The second reading this morning is the story of Zacchaeus, which Allison shared with us. It can be found in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. And that is on page 82 in the New Testament section of the Pew Bible. Listen again for the word of God. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay in your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to the house to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The word of the Lord. Thanks. His name was Zacchaeus. He was a person just like you and me. But you would never know this if you walked into Jericho. Even though he was a Jew, no one said his name without an undertone of hatred, without a detested loathing, without a disgust of betrayal. Zacchaeus was a traitor. He sold his soul to the government, the same government that rejected Jews as citizens, the same government 
that charged Jews to live within its boundaries, the same government that took advantage of the Jews. Zacchaeus was a man, a person, just like you and me, but he was no one who you'd want to be compared to. Zacchaeus lived in an oversized house on the hill. Everyone could see it. His house was the best of the best. And it should be, based on the amount of money he stole from the people of Jericho. His house was built by the hard-earned money of everyone else. You see, Zacchaeus was the town's chief tax collector. That, that title should strike fear in you and put a little shiver in your spine, so let me say it again. Zacchaeus was the town's chief tax collector. At a government auction, he won the right to collect taxes from the town of Jericho. So Zacchaeus collected the taxes for the people and a bit extra. He made sure that his pockets were padded that he never lived in want of anything, that his life was luxurious. Even if someone else was doing the work for him. Yes, Zacchaeus was a man, a person, but he was a despicable one at that. On this particular day, the radical rabbi Jesus was passing through town. People had heard of the miracles that he performed and his unorthodox teachings. When Jesus came to town, word traveled fast. From whispers to gossip to stories of healing, everyone soon knew that Jesus was there. There always seemed to be a crowd around him. This day was typical. And by typical, I mean that no day when Jesus was around was really typical. The crowd seemed to surround Jesus all day. They never dissipated. People jockeyed for position, trying to get the best view. They were const- there was a constant hum of, shh, I can't see, I can't hear, quiet. Young children danced around the crowds of people, diving in between gaps and filling any holes in the crowd. Zacchaeus was one of the few who was on the outskirts. Being short, he almost blended in with the kids, trying to see over the crowds. It was no surprise that Zacchaeus was on the outskirts. A hazard of his profession was that he was excluded from society whenever the community members could manage it. So what came next happened as a bit of a surprise, a a gift of sorts, a glorious, embarrassing, I can't believe that just happened type of moment. Sure, Zacchaeus was a man, a person, but what happened next was not the way any normal man should act. You see, Zacchaeus took off running. Running. He sprinted ahead of Jesus and the crowd of people. People could not believe their eyes. Grown men don't run. So you could understand the shock and the onset of giggles and, and the shaking of heads and the rolling of eyes that came from those who could see what was happening. And then, as if Zacchaeus had any dignity left to lose, he stopped running and then started climbing a sycamore tree. Can you believe it? Only boys climbed trees, not grown men. Zacchaeus shimmied his way up the trunk and then hoisted himself up onto a branch. It's only fitting that the sycamore tree was full of figs, figs that the poor people ate when they had no food because perhaps, um, well, they were forced to pay too much in taxes. 
Zacchaeus was a man, a person, dejected and alone and hiding in a tree. As the crowds moved towards Zacchaeus, people nudged their neighbor and pointed in the direction of the tax collector sitting in the sycamore tree. I could only suppose that by the time the crowds made its way to the occupied tree, Jesus could not help but know of the man sitting in the tree. Jesus stopped and through the crowds surveyed the unwanted man huddled in a tree, straining his neck to see this rabbi of miracles. Looking straight into the eyes of the rejected man, a man who was treated no better than the leper sitting outside the city walls, a man who was treated no better than the blind man in town begging for acknowledgement, the man who was treated no better than the prostitute who desired to be more than her body, looking straight into the eyes of this rejected man, Jesus said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. With this simple statement, Zacchaeus, this man, this person, became wanted, became loved, became acknowledged. Now the people in the town were dumbfounded. Their jaws unraveled as they tried to understand what is going on. Their eyes darted from Jesus to Zacchaeus, back to Jesus, back to Zacchaeus. What? What was going on? Um, What just happened? They looked to their neighbors to double check that their ears had not failed them. He's going to the house of Zacchaeus? He's going to the house of the tax collector? He's going to the house of the sinner. He's going to the house of the reject. Now, you would be upset too. This man, Zacchaeus, was a traitor. Zacchaeus knew that this was their land promised by God, not land that they should be taxed to live on. Zacchaeus knew of Moses and the covenant between God and God's people. Zacchaeus knew the stories that were told from generation to generation to generation. Zacchaeus knew of the sacrifices that had been made, the years spent wandering in the desert. Zacchaeus knew. He knew. He knew. And yet, Zacchaeus sold himself out. He, so, he sold his loyalty to the Roman Empire. You can see why they were upset. This was a man they hated. This was a man who they had systematically pushed out of the Jewish community. And now Jesus was paying special attention to him? To Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was a man a person. No one can exactly explain what happened next, but, but people are still talking about it today. It is one of those moments where no matter where you were, you'll always remember what happened. Flabbergasted, the people of the crowd stood motionless. The wind stood still. The dust that had been stirred up from the crowd settled down. The only movement was the slow shift of the crowd's eyes as they watched Zacchaeus. In one fluid motion, he seemed to fly down from the tree and gently land at the feet of Jesus. His eyes panned Jesus' body moving up 
from his feet until they looked each other in the eye. And then quickly Zacchaeus looked down, maybe in awe or fear, but his eyes quickly darted back down to the ground. He took a deep breath, and as if it was one fluid word, he said, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and, 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 and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay them back four times as much. Seemingly, those words served simultaneously as a statement, a peace offering, and a repentance for a lifestyle that haunted this town. Zacchaeus was a man, a person, standing humbled and grateful at the feet of our Lord. On a day that started like any other day, in a town reminiscent of any other town, at a moment that would have normally passed without much acknowledgement, deafening silence filled the air. The crowd seemed to be holding their collective breath as Jesus lifted up the head of Zacchaeus, saying, Today, salvation has come to this because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. In that moment, Jesus became salvation in the flesh. Zacchaeus was a man, a person, just like you and me. He once was lost.